Over 180 spike ball teams have gathered today in Coney Island, New York to compete in Spikeball's sixth annual summer spike tournament. We'll crown champions in men's, women's, and co-ed divisions. Welcome to Coney Island, New York for Spikeball's Summer Spike, presented by Landshark Lager, official beer of Spikeball and Spikeballers everywhere. Marshall Harris here alongside two-time national spike ball champion Sean Boyer, where MCU Park, home of the Brooklyn Cyclones, has been transformed into Spike Ball Central. This has been a favorite tour stop of the players for the last five years. Sean, no reason why that would change today. Absolutely not. I'm expecting a very high caliber play today. Typically our tournaments are out on a beach or at a park, so this turf surface may we do some interesting rallies, but I'm excited to see how the players combat it. Round net, the game, easy to learn, difficult to master. Let's take a look at the basics. The sport of round net is played two on two with each team starting on opposite sides of the net. Once the ball is served, you get up to three touches to try to return the ball back on the net, just like two on two volleyball. Think bump, set, and spike. What makes round net unique is that after the serve, there are no sides or boundaries. You can run, pass, and spike the ball off the net in any direction to try to win the point. When a team fails to return the ball, the rally is over and the other team receives one point. That's about it for the basics. We're getting ready for co-ed semifinal number one, Jared Rouse and Tori Farlow going up against Joel Graham and Becca Graham. Let's learn more about these players. Meet team Rouse Farlow, hailing from Santa Barbara, California. Jared Rouse is a natural athlete. He played for four years as catcher at Belmont University and is currently a fitness instructor in California. Just look at that form. On the court, Jared makes everything he does look easy, but over the course of his four years playing competitive round net, he's honed his skills by competing in over 30 spike ball tournaments. His teammate today, Tori Farlow, a natural athlete as well. Tori played volleyball for UNC Wilmington. If you're looking to see some all out dives, just watch a game with Tori. She's quickly becoming one of the best competitive ballers around. Last week, even winning gold over her opponent today, the previously undefeated Becca Graham. Now let's meet Team Graham Graham. Joel Graham was a standout player last month's Lancaster Invitational, racking up some of the best highlights of the day. His teammate, Becca Graham, was the winner of the women's division at that same tournament. And yes, Joel Graham and Becca Graham are husband and wife. They actually met each other playing spike ball. And well, the rest is history. Now you've met the teams, let's jump into the co-ed semifinals. It's the decisive game three in the first co-ed semifinal here at Summer Spike. And Jared Rouse will start to serve the team of Rouse and Farlow going up against the Grams and Grams unable to get that back on net. Rouse Farlow out of the gate with the first point. And here Jared Rouse who's shown us a myriad of serves and he's got a lot of options, decides to pivot left here. His serves have been looking strong today. He's got the left and the right, keeps players guessing, makes them step out. And if you can make their first, first touch off a serve, uh, not a good one, you're already a step ahead. Pocket serve there, so a second serve opportunity coming for the Grams. This one on net. The drop shot is soft, but not soft enough. And nice move, it's still alive. And what a return. Joel does a great job to keep this alive, an even better job to get it on the net. But in the end, Tori finishes it. So the team of Rouse and Farlow, up now two to one early and very active are both teams, understanding everything's on the line here. A little flango there off the pivot. Graham and Graham and Becca Graham finds a large chunk of grass where no one is. Definitely, that's a point the Grams probably shouldn't have run or won because Tori had an awesome serve, stayed low, almost seemed like a miss hit, but uh, Becca was there to pick it up. And now Becca Graham will serve, unable to get it where she needed it, however. So the point goes to Rouse and Farlow. Jared Rouse back, this time looking to go from the left side. That one's up and off the back rim goes Joel Graham. Catches the rim, you'll see, you'll see these teams trying to use almost always use their third touch. It's similar to beach volleyball doubles. You, all, you always want to use that third touch to maximize your versatility with hits. Nice play there by Farlow to keep it alive. And 
over the top. You see a huge dive and rollout from Tori on that one. Jared does a good job getting in space, but a little soft-handed, and, and Tori hits it way too far. So Team Rouse Barlow up four to three, but it's Joel Graham serving, and nice finish there. That was textbook in terms of how you set it up with the bump, the set, and the spike. It really was, and, and that's the beauty of round net. No sides, no boundaries, hit it in any direction. Makes defense so hard, but also so fun. So Rouse Farlow, lobster trap on that serve by Farlow, and now Becca Graham in control. Return, set up, spike, kept up in the air, but out of the reach of his teammate, Becca Graham. Yeah, the ball took a, a weird bounce there. It came straight up. I don't think Joel was expecting it. He had a good dive, but his set was more away from the net than towards. Made it hard for Becca. So Jared Rouse back in control. Serves with the left. Let's see if they can get a spike off into no man's land, and they do. Good job there of being just textbook with what you're given. It was a clean hit. She found the space. She hit it right through him, thread the needle. That's what you're looking for on offense. So now the drop shot. Kept alive, though, and over the head of Jared Rouse. And the Grams have knotted things up at six apiece. We call that no man's land. Jared was not close enough to the net to make a play and not far enough back to run it down. So now Graham with the serve. Bumps that spike. Kept alive by Becca Graham. She gets a chance to spike it away. Kept alive going the other way now. Going behind him is Rouse. Body shot. Set up nicely. Up and high. Kept alive, but she can't get it going in the right direction. And Rouse Farlow get the point. These teams are doing a great job of using 360 degrees. They're making the, the opponent work for it. So 7-6 is the score. Fuengo, light and done, over the top of the net. It's the pocket. Kept alive. You got it! Long return. Is it going to be over the net? Goes for the tweener, but unsuccessful was Jared Rouse. But it, it was a good idea based on where he was and which direction he had to head. Yeah, props for the attempt. Uh, I think it was a low percentage shot, but when he's in that angle, it's kind of all he had. Serve here by Becca Graham. Off the body and looks like it hits front back rim. So that point's going to go over to the Grams. You can do it. Barlow getting a little excited out there. She did find back rim on that. We see these from these players trying to trying to push the limits, get those strong hits, but it doesn't always work out. If you don't get one point, get the next, and that's exactly what Farlow does using the drop shot. She's used that several times to keep the opponents off balance, and it's worked. Here's Rouse with the left-handed serve. Becca's doing such a good job of waiting for the ball to get low. You, you typically don't want to hit it when the ball's over your head or even at your waist. The closer it is to the net, the easier it is to hit on. So they're hitting on and also not letting the defense set up position. As another point and a reserve here. This one goes up. So that looks like it'll be a double fault from Joel. Similar to tennis, once you've uh, had two, it goes to the other team's point. Nice set here. And going back and out. And a good job there by the Grams as they take a 10 to 9 lead. And we are coming down the stretch here in this best of three. Go ahead, semifinal number one. It's Becca Graham now on the serve. Farlow, the setup. Textbook play there to get it back over to Jared Rouse, who finishes it off. Looks like both teams are starting to get their rhythm, starting to hit those one, two, three offensive points. That's what you want. Get a groove. Hope the other team makes an error. Here's Rouse on the serve. Set up by Graham to Graham. Farlow in position. Gets a spike off and just past the outstretched arm of Becca Graham. So a point there for Rouse and Farlow, and they now have a one-point lead. That's about as good a hit as she could have hoped for. Being off the net like that means the defense knows exactly the angle you're going to have, but she kept it well and got a nice front net. Left hand again here for Rouse. Uses the body to save it. Tries to go around the back and dive down, but unable to get it back on net, and we're back to being all square. Goes for it again. I don't think I'm the only one here that hopes that gets on if he tries it again. Would have been an exciting play. Instead, you've got two teams racing to get to the 15-point mark. This one up in the air. Nice set there. Saved by Rouse. Farlow sets him up. Graham using the left hand. Gets it back. The 
Hunter saved to the side, kept alive again. What a rally here, and the drop shot ends it. Great second set from Joel. Becca has enough time to put it on. Tori puts this one along. Joel is high enough. An even better second set here from Becca so Joel can put it short and find Jared too far. So an important 12th point here by Joel and Becca Graham, and they earned it. Both teams putting a lot on it, and now they're three points away from advancing to the finals. That is the uh, unconventional hit on two. If you see the defense cheating, playing that third hit, you hit on two, but if, if you miss, your teammate will be mad. They get the hit on two. It's all tied up at 12, three points away both these teams are now. And kept alive there by Rouse, who gets back, uses his left to put it back on net. Here's Graham to Graham, within reach. Got some work to do to get it back on net and unable to do it. That first bump wasn't close enough to the net to set up the proper spike for Rouse to Farlow. The edge I'm seeing right now from Joel and Beck is, is their second sets during possession are getting closer to the net, making it much easier to hit that third on. Tori and Jared are struggling right now. Graham on the serve. The team of Graham makes a save on the drop shot, keeps it alive, but although he kept it up in the air, a diving Farlow unable to get to it, and now we are looking at match point for Joel Graham and Becca Graham. I'd like to see her bring a little heat on this serve here. She's got a point or two cushion to, to play with. We'll see what she decides. Clearly a situation where the Grams can afford to just trade points. So even if they can't get this down, looks like that one front rimmed. So they have a chance here, two shots to get the match. And that was a little high for Becca. She's gonna call a fault. Uh, and Jared's gonna take a knee for a second serve. Keep it alive, looking to make it happen. Kept alive again, up on the net. Graham to Graham, body shot. And that is the way it's going to end. The team of Joel Graham and Becca Graham defeating Jared Rouse and Farlow. Let's take a look at the way that one ended. Jared opts for the knee serve. Quick one, two, three from Becca. Pops up for him. And Joel's gonna get a nice backhand on here. Jarrett and Tori can't do enough to keep this game alive. So the team of Graham and Graham will advance to the championship match. We'll see who they will play in just a moment. It can be a game of power, but also just as easily it can be a game of finesse. More Spike Ball Summer Spike in just a moment. Spike Ball Summer Spike is presented by Landshark Lager, the official beer of Spike Ball and Spike Ballers everywhere and in part by Savage Apparel Company. If you like the jerseys you're seeing, visit savageapparelcompany.com. Welcome back to Coney Island, one of the biggest spike ball tour stops, but far from the only one. The 2018 spike ball tournament structure consists of 23 tournaments across four regions of the U.S. with huge tournaments having already taken place from Santa Monica, California, all the way to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and here today in Coney Island. Spike ballers of all ages and skill levels have come together to compete one another on the road to the national championships in Santa Monica this October. The season is only half over, so go to tournaments.spikeball.com to learn more info and find a tournament near you. Getting set for co-ed semifinal number two between Skylar Bowles and Jenna Coleman against Chris Hornacek and Julie Hazelton. Let's learn a little bit more about these four players. Meet Team Bowles Coleman. Hailing from Chico, California, Skylar Bowles is a veteran of competitive round net and thought by many to be one of the greatest spike ballers of all time. Alongside his partner and my co-announcer today, Sean Boyer. Skylar won back-to-back -back national championships in 2014 and 2015. And from Louisville, Kentucky, we have Jenna Coleman. Jenna worked through college as a freelance spike ball jersey designer, both designing jerseys for and competing against some of the top spike ball teams in the nation. Coleman actually placed third at Women's Nationals this past year alongside her opponent today, Julie Hazelton. As you can see, there's a lot of bad blood between these two ex-teammates. Which brings us to Team Hornacek Hazelton. Hailing from Chicago, Illinois, Chris Hornacek is known for his powerful overhand serves and shouting, let's go. He's also president of Origin Roundnet, the world's largest roundnet club. As a longtime member of that club, Julie Hazelton balances Chris's intensity with a uniquely entertaining style of play on the field. 
it's been rumored that if she doesn't eat a banana once a day, she will feel incomplete. Co-ed semifinal number two, who will advance to the championship match in the red, Chris Hornacek and Julie Hazelton taking on Skylar Bowles and Jenna Coleman and Hazelton. And Hornacek to serve, Hornacek a nice save there, getting set up nicely off the body of Skylar Bowles and they will take the first point. Went straight through his hand, Swiss cheese, he's gonna want that back, that's, that's very untypical of him. Here's Hornacek on the serve. A hard server there. There's Julie Hazelton, kept alive, but out of reach. I don't think Julie was expecting that to get to her so fast. Chris was in her line of sight. She made a good effort, but just too slow. Here's Jenna Coleman on the serve. Nice set there. And what a strong finish there by Chris Hornacek. Love the energy both teams are bringing out right now. They're here to play. So Hazelton. Stay in command on the serve. Her team up two to one. Lobster trap on that one though. That'll even things up at two and now put the ball in the hands of Skylar Bowles. Bowles on the serve. Oh, what a dive, but unable to contain it was Bowles. Yeah, Bowles is known for those, those bids, those dives, those layouts. He's been around the scene for quite some time, considered one of the best players in the game. My old partner actually, so I'm a little biased, but He's gonna give us a good show today. It's okay that you're biased, you just have extra insight. Exactly. Return serve there, ready to play it was Hazelton, and now using a nice left, what a save. Oh! But the dive by Jenna Coleman, unable to get it back on net. Right after I give Skyler some praise, he goes and does that with a set that just doesn't do any favors for, for Jenna Coleman. Gotta set your teammates up out here. Instead, it's Hornacek and Hazelton, out in front, four to two. Here's a nice bump set spike, and well out of the reach of Hornacek there, off the hands of Skylar Bowles. Hornacek caught a little bit on his heels there. Uh, Hornacek actually, uh, another player who's very well known in the community, has traveled around to probably more tournaments than most people uh, I know. We have tournaments all over the country, and it seems like every other weekend he's at a new one. One drop shot deserves another. The drop shot on the serve, successfully returned, and then the point ends in a drop shot by Hazelton, who will now serve. Here's the set. A lot of soft play there, and it pays off there for the team of Bowles and Coleman. As Coleman gets the job done, and now it's Bowles on the serve. Flango set up and into no man's land. Goes Hornacek with the shot. Textbook there. Nice power from him. He's got some wild swings, really gets a lot behind it, makes it so hard to read. So here you have the power. <laughs> that was a close one. We could almost hear it up here, though. It hit some rim on the way off. They're going to call it no good. Point back over to Bowles and Coleman. Coleman will serve. That one's kept up, close to the net. Good opportunity. Kept alive. Can they get it back on net? Nope. Just too far away and both players in the same area. No one in position to put it back on net. We're all squared six. Yeah, A for effort from Hornacek and Hazelton there. They're running, they're making moves out here. Just wasn't enough. So here's Coleman. Return nicely, the backhand. Unsuccessful there. If I were Hornacek's coach, I'd say, go hit the wall with your left hand. He's got to <laughs> do a left on that one. Instead, no left and Coleman and Bowles in. Good position, but not as good a position there as Hazelton, who gets the kill shot and back over to Hazelton for the serve. Yeah, it's been a tight game so far. Both te teams kind of feeling each other out. I expect uh, one team to break away coming into the uh, latter half. Pocket there, so a second serve coming for Hazelton. This time she gets it on net. And right through, threading the needle, was Bowles the other way. Excuse me, Coleman the other way. The trajectory of that ball coming off the net was so low. I don't think it got above anyone's kneecaps. That makes it so hard to defend for these uh, teams out here. But it's really what you want on offense. Bowles misses with the Fuengo attempt. Back over now to Hornacek to serve. All square at eight halfway through this first game of the co-ed semifinal. Nice shot there. No shot for Skylar Bowles as Hornacek put a little extra on that. 
Really using what he's known for, that power, going up and over the defense. If you're going to see a defense that's coming up close to the net, trying to get a little body touch, you just hit it over their head. So now, Onisek serving to Jenna Coleman. Front rims it. Back over now to Coleman, who will serve. Coleman, and they'll play it. And nice drop shot there, soft and lovely. Yeah. It looks like uh, the team of Hazleton and Hornacek back in command. A lot of drop shots here in the early going. Yeah, little dinkers from them just getting it barely off the net. It's hard to hard to yeah, keep yeah, on top of it, especially when you've been getting hit at so hard from the Hornacek, Hornacek slaps and really makes you stay honest out there. That time, Hazleton unable to keep the ball off net and into the action. He said the double hit on net. That gets the point going the other way. But there's Hornacek with another point. And this one has been back and forth throughout. Bulls and Coleman want to step it up on D. That's where I think they're losing this game right now. They're not getting any breaks. If they want to come back in this one, they're going to need to step it up. Nice set there. And I guess it wasn't as nice as I initially thought because she had to stop short of where she wanted to be in terms of putting the ball on net. Now back over to Bowles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James, this one kept alive. Nice shot, spiked. Good save there by Bowles. Can he get it back on net? Oh. Julie puts it long. Jenna barely gets a hand on it. Great set from Skyler to keep it alive. But in the end, just too far out of reach for Jenna to finish it. So unable to get the point there. We are still all square at 12. This has been one of the best back and forth in terms of evenly played games we've seen in a while. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to here if which team can get an ace or get a serve that puts the other team on their heels and sets the tone there, hopefully catch a break. With that in mind, Julie Hazelton gets her serve on net. A nice job, spinning move for the kill there by Coleman. Easy one, two, three into space. That's textbook round net. Nothing too fancy, but gets the job done. Fundamentals looming large here. Here's Bowles. Oh. The serve return, and that goes over the head and losing his hat is Bowles as he tries to make an attempt on the Hornacek kill. So Hornacek, let's see how much power he puts behind this serve. Instead, it's like he hits pocket. Up and over. Players, uh, they're either going to take a little bit off on this second serve or go all out. We'll see what Hornacek decides. Hornacek goes front rim. And now it's game point on the serve of Jenna Coleman. And Coleman unable to do it. She hits rim and now double game point. Each of these teams will take game one depending on who gets it. Bowles and Coleman have an advantage here. It's, it's much better to be served to you. You get the first offense possession. So for Julie and Chris to stay in this game, they're going to need a defensive up. There's Hazel oh, or an ace. on that. And the ace gets the job done. Unable to return it is Jenna Coleman. That's it, right? Yeah. Okay. And that is game point. 15-14, eking out the win, the team of Hornacek and Hazel. Skylar Bowles and Jenna Coleman losing by the narrowest of margins. We'll see if they can make it a comeback in game two up next. Welcome back to Spike Ball's Summer Spike presented by Landshark Lager. Game two of co-ed semifinal number two between Skylar Bowles and Jenna Coleman against Chris Hornacek and Julie Hazelton. It will be Skylar Bowles on to serve to start this one after Hornacek and Hazleton took game one. Yeah, in the first game we saw, Hornacek and Hazleton had that edge on defense. They were getting the defensive ups. And just like that, Skyler was struggling to serve to keep them on. Not the way you want to start the lobster trap to begin things. And here comes the power from Hornacek. Let's see if he can get the set here. Not the best bump, but the left off the front of the rim. And really, that goes back to the bump. Yeah, that, that's what you want on that second set. You want to put it across the net. It makes it easier for your teammate to run in stride, hit it on. I think it just being on Hazleton's left hand made it even harder than her right. Nice drop shot there, but able to 
come back, and now the body shot. That hits the pocket. Coleman keeps it alive. Over to Hazelton. Portisek can't get it on net. The short from Julie makes Skyway and Jenna play from the ground. A great thrust from Julie. Uh, she gets the pocket on the way off, but Jenna's there to react. Chris pops it above his head and a little too far off the net to finish. So what a point and what a rally by both sides here in the early going in game two and now Coleman on to serve. Return nicely and threading the needle there. Looked like a miscommunication on Skyler and Jenna's part. They got a little spread. Chris took advantage of it, hit right into space. So Hornacek gets the kill there. And now back over to Hazelton for the serve. She hits rim. And a point goes the other way. Players of this caliber are going to hit rim maybe two, three times every game. If you don't do that, then you're not, you're not pushing your serve enough. You're not trying to get those aces. Here's a situation where the body shot comes into play. Kept up and alive and high off Hornacek. Again, saved nicely. And a good job there. Quick hit from Julie. Even quicker hands from Sky. He pops it up high. They get under it, and Chris tries to bring the power. Another quick hand from Sky with his left, pushes it right into Chris's body. So looking at the early goings here, Bowles and Coleman with a four to two lead. See if they can make the most of having a little bit of a cushion. Nice job there by Hazelton. Another good job, kept alive by Hornacek. Nice layout, but the finish there by Jenna Coleman. Textbook tweener from Julie. Sky pops it up, hits it over the head. Awesome bid from uh, Chris to get it on. Julie reacts well. Jenna puts it away, though. So 5-2 here in the early going. It's been some good points here and some, some service points for the team of Bowles and Coleman. That's kept up high, kept alive. Let's see if they can get it back towards the net. They do, but front rimming it is Skylar Bowles. Great effort from Skylar Bowles. He had a almost second, third effort on that uh, set back to Jenna. He is known as one of the best players in this game, and he's showing it today. Looking for power here on this serve, and not disappointing is Hornacek. Laying it off the net, and off the back of the rim Bowles was Bowles. Bowles also known for uh, his trick shots and trying to push the envelope there. I think it just didn't work out for him on that one. High serve there, so they'll redo it. This horn is heck. We'll see how much power he puts behind his serves. One of the most consistent hard hitters we've seen out here today. Yeah, and he's also known. He goes around to so many tournaments. We have tournaments all over the country, and he's usually at every one, whether it's east, west coast. It doesn't matter. He's flying there. Horn is heck unable to get that returned over to his partner, so now the point goes in favor of Bowles and Coleman. Coleman now on to serve. Kept alive, nice bump spike. Goes up and over the way. And Hazleton will serve now for Team Hornacek Hazleton. Good chemistry from Hornacek and Hazleton. They're actually in uh, the same round net club out in Chicago, Illinois. Their uh, origin round net is the name, and it looks like their chemistry is pulling through today. Here we have Hazelton on the serve, second serve here. Her team down six to five, and the lobster trap means her team down now seven to five. So Bowles puts one on net, trying to be soft. Great job there. Can it be kept alive? Yes. But coming back the other way, Hazelton out of the reach of Coleman. Big backhand from Julie. Skyler has a great dive, keeps it alive. Jenna pops it up for him. He hits it from far. Jenna and Chris are working back towards the net, and they get a lucky pocket. So 7-6 now. Bowles and Coleman holding on to a one-point lead. And it's Hornacek on to serve. Drops the nice, soft shot, the drop shot ace there. He's gotten you conditioned to his power, and then goes in a completely different direction. Very cheeky move. He's bringing that right hand over the top. Looks like the big swing's coming and sneaks the left under. Hit it short on Coleman. And rightfully so, she was not prepared. Going back the other way, Bowles doing a great job with his left hand there. And clearly, team Hornacek Hazelton not in position to make that return. So here's Coleman again on the serve. Set up nicely. Over to Hazelton, the body shot back on net. 
Here's a save. And a nice put away there by Hornacek. They make it look so easy, that tweener from Hornacek. Steps over the net, hits it between his legs, comes off clean. That's exactly what you want, but I'm sure he's practiced that 100 times. You were wondering just how easy this game is to play. Yeah, that, that's to be said, but when the competition goes up, mastering it is a different story. Is a nice drop shot there by Jenna Coleman. Absolutely, and what's interesting with these teams, they've all played together for years. They know each other's styles, and they know what to expect, but you're always trying to find that edge and, and do something different that no one's seen before. Nice shot there by Hornacek as he threads the needle. We're looking at a, another game that's gone back and forth just as game one nice. did. This has been tight. Here's Hornacek again, power this time. Nice body shot. Unable to get it back on net though. Coleman and Bowles. Coleman choked uh, Bowles up there, hit it into his chest. You don't want that. You typically want to set the ball right over the net so your partner can step into it and have a lot of options for hit. That's a textbook return job by the team of Bowles and Coleman. And now we're all squared at 10. Remember, Hornacek and Hazleton won game one, so they can win this game and advance to the championship. Meanwhile, trying to force a game two are Bowles and Coleman. Yeah, I think Bowles needs to come around the backside of Hornacek there, try and cover that space. He's got way too much room to hit with his right hand. So here's Julie Hazelton serving with her team with a one point lead. Gets it on net, bumped nicely, and great job there on both the set and the kill from Coleman to Bowles. Coleman and Bowles, they must, they must have practiced that before. It was a quick set from Coleman. Catch the defense off guard, didn't have time to react. Here's Hornacek and Hazelton. Hazelton doing a great job just outside the outstretched hand of one Jenna Coleman. So now, 12-11, Hornacek Hazelton, three points away from advancing to the championship. The serve goes call, high. Yeah, a pocket or high on that one. Not sure what Jenna referenced, but Chris goes back for a second serve. Nice drop into the pocket by Coleman to even things up at 12 apiece, and now she will serve. They need a big ace, a break here, get back in this game, force a game three. Ball on net, return. And just too easy of a play there for Hazelton and Hornacek to make. Hornacek's been doing well to hit it up and over him. He's finding that space. They're creeping the net a little bit, and he's uh, reacting. So now Hazelton, just a couple of points away, she will serve to Skylar Bowles. Bowles on the return. Bumps, set, saved nicely, kept alive by the pocket. Yeah. Nice power move there. And unable to get it back to his partner was Hornacek. So now we're back even at 13 apiece. Two points wins this game and the match for Hornacek Hazelton. Bowles on the serve. Over the top. Bump it set. And waving and missing. Big whiff from Julie on that one. Bowles and Coleman get away with it. And they got a chance to take this game. So game point now for Bowles and Coleman. They'll serve, set up, and the nice behind him kill for, for Chris Hornacek. And he's keenly aware of where his opponents are when he goes down and drops it back like that. Game point now, match point for Hazleton and Hornacek. That ball way up in the air. The set on the net, good save job there. Left hand off the back rim. And that's the way this match will end. Let's take a look at that final point that allows Hornacek and Hazleton to advance. Huge over the head spike from Skyler on this. Julie has to track it down. Chris puts it back towards the net. It's a good set. Jen and Skyler have to work it off the ground and not enough. Great match as Hornacek and Hazleton advance to the final. He's known for his power serve, but just when you think you got him figured out, he'll drop one on you. Chris Hornacek, Julie Hazleton, advancing here at Summer Spike. Welcome back to Spike Ball Summer Spike. Earlier today, we had the women's final. Here's a look at the highlights presented by Cafe Mystico. 
Becca Graham and Ali Kaufman against Tori Farlow and Ashley Gingrich for all the marbles. Farlow with the double hit to lose the point, but she recovered. Nice drop shot as momentum swings, and then Graham can't get to the Kaufman set here. Farlow and Gingrich take the women's title two to nothing. On the men's side, the powerhouse duo of Tyler Chiswick and PJ Showalter trying to add to their trophy case, facing brothers Max and Cole Modell in the semifinals, and the Modell brothers hanging early. But as the match continues, Chiswick and Showalter too much action over the net. They advance to the final. Then in the championship against Preston Byes and Harding Brumby, unable to finish here, but as the match goes on, they find a groove. In the end, it's Tyler Chiswick on championship point with the serve. It is unreturnable, and it's also undeniable that Chiswick and Showalter are on top once again, 2-0 the final. That's a look at your men's and women's finals winners. Up next, the co-ed championship. Spike Ball Summer Spike is presented by Landshark Lager, the official beer of Spike Ball and Spike Ballers everywhere. Game two of this co-ed final here at Spike Ball's Summer Spike. After taking game one, Hornacek and Hazleton will start out serving. There we see a shot threading the needle. At that point, looks like it's gonna be a redo. Yeah, right now they're discussing. It was a really low trajectory, which sometimes it means it could have hit rim on the way off. I think they'll go to observers on this and the observers make the call that it was a clean hit. Sorry, it hit rim, and it will be Hazleton Hornacek's point. All right, so Hazleton and Hornacek out to a one nothing lead. That one goes high. So another serve here for Chris Hornacek. Joel Graham trying to find a way to receive it and set his partner up. Nice set there, good body shot, but kept on the net. The body goes through. Strange point there. It almost looked like it ended before it did. I think teams were a little caught off guard, but Beck and Joel stuck to it and came out with it. Here's a nice setup there and textbook play there. Easy one, two, three. Chemistry from uh, Hazleton and Hornacek shining through. They are both members of Origin Roundnet Club out in Chicago. So Hornacek gets the point. Hazleton now on to serve. Team up two to one. That didn't go the way she wanted. So it, it did not. You, you are going to see some rims out here from players on the serves. They always want to be hitting it hard. They always want to go for the ace. So it's, it's not unheard of, but you got to limit them. Nice job and save here. Kept alive, keeping it up in the air. Can they get it back to net? Unable to do so as Becca Graham reached out there. Should she have gone for the set there? I think so. You almost always want to go for the third hit. I'm guessing she was looking straight at the sun in that one. It was a pretty high ball. Even with the glasses, she uh, it looked like she lost it. Those are the, some of the toughest sets to hit. Beautiful weather here on Coney Island. That one's returned nicely, bodied up. And another kill shot for Hornacek. We've been seeing a, a decent amount of pockets on this. This is actually players are playing on the pro kit. Uh, Spike Ball offers quite a variety of kits, uh, the standard and the rookie. Uh, but this is handles the pockets the best, we say, which is why we use it at tournaments. Return there and unable to get over to her partner was Becca Graham. And all of a sudden, Hornacek and Hazleton in control here in the co-ed final. Good return there. Trying to use the body. Instead, goes straight through. And although that didn't look too graceful from Joel, it started with the set from Becca. It was a little far. He didn't have much to work with. And it was really his only option and not a good one. High serve there. So they'll have a second one. Chris being known for his power, I'm almost surprised he doesn't get more high serves. He's also one of the few players, he, he swings from over the top of his head on top of the ball, uh, it, which usually gives it a high trajectory. A lot of players you'll see they'll hit a sidearm trying to get a little topspin on it. Graham's trying to run it back the other way. Down 6-3. Going for the misdirection there was Joel Graham. Hits front rim instead. So now we'll see if Hazleton and Hornacek can take advantage of a, a four point cushion. Yeah, they've looked dominant so far in game one and coming into game two. Nice shot there. 
Here's Hazleton, gets the pocket on that, keeps it alive for Graham. Back over, another good set, and the drop shot. So the shot off the mark, and now the Grahams back on serve, down seven to four. Still time to make up the space here. Drop shot attempt there by Hornacek, and then unable to get to it was Hazleton. And the Grahams making a hard charge here on serve. Yeah, that's an example where it popping up almost favored the offense. It, Julie was running long and was almost too far instead of uh, being in the right spot. Pocket there on serve number one for Becca. Now saved and serving. Great sweep through there by Hazleton to get the point. So 8-5. Hornacek and Hazleton with a lead. We'll be back with the conclusion of this game in just a moment. Spikeball Summer Spike is presented by Landshark Lager, the official beer of Spikeball and Spikeballers everywhere. And in part by Savage Apparel Company. If you like the jerseys you're seeing, visit SavageApparelCompany.com. The team of Chris Hornacek and Julie Hazleton, after winning game one, up 8-5 here in game two of the co-ed final at Spikeball's Summer Spike. And now it's Chris Hornacek on to serve. Back to receive is Joel Graham and the Lobster Trap. Gets the Grahams within two points at 8-6. Serve from Joel Graham. Nice bump, spike, and set. And the spike over the head of Graham by Hornacek there. He's been doing that all day, catching teams too close, hitting it long. It's really been uh, an X factor for both him and uh, Hazleton. You'll see Hazleton, she's lined up very far back here. That white line around the net is actually the serving line. It's six feet, which is a, a, the required distance you have to be away. It looks like she's eight or nine. I think she takes a big step forward, gets that power behind the ball. So a big point there is now it's 10 to six. They're five points away from calling themselves the Summer Spike Champs. That serve hits pocket, so she'll get another. Similar to tennis, you get two faults. So she's wanting, you're gonna wanna get this one on. Tries to drop it softly. Kept alive there by Hornacek. Tries to go between his legs and there's some contact there. Let's see what they say, the observers. Caught Joel in the face on that. I, I will say, I've been playing for a number of years and as much as you think this happens, it doesn't happen too often, which is why we heard a few gas in the crowd. And looks like Joel's gonna go to walk this one off, thankfully. Yeah, so Joel Graham will get a moment to make sure that he's okay. Point's gonna go over to the Grahams, I believe, unless they're gonna do a replay. And they're gonna discuss this one. My guess is they will play it up, typically on something like this. Even if it's not as hard of a hit to someone's face, it's considered a hinder and you just start from the beginning, no one's point, uh, play it up in all regards. I think the Grahams do get the point on this one. It's gonna be Becca Graham now on the serve. Her team down 10-7. Needing a rally here to force a game three and the front rim's not gonna help. Yeah, they look a little rattled, even aside from that body contact we saw. They have not been able to find a rhythm this game. Hornacek and Hazleton just controlling the outcome. Here's Hornacek. He hits a back pocket there. So on to a second serve. See if he's less aggressive, actually more aggressive. It's the front rim. So he gives up the point. The Graham's now on serve. Nice set there. Diving, Becca Graham can't get to it and Hazleton gets the kill. Hornacek, Hazleton just three points away now from having the ability to call themselves champions. Yep, and on that last one, intuition would tell you to Hazleton to, just, Hazleton to just smash that ball, but being a veteran player, she finds the middle ground. It doesn't go as far as where Becca is. Great body job there by Hazleton, and he gets it off the net. What a play. A hard low serve from Julie. Joel pops it up high, comes into this body, miracle knee touch from Julie, and has a great hit afterwards. Hazleton now on to serve. Two points away. Becca Graham on the return. Gets it set up oh, for her. Finds space for the point. But 13-9 at this point, 
Hornacek and Hazleton can afford to just trade points. Yeah, at this level, it's so hard to get back into a game like this when you're down six, seven points. Because more often than not on offense, you will trade points. It's, it's very hard to play defense. There you see it. Great job there by Hornacek and Hazleton to stay alive and then get the point. When it looked like that point might go to the Grams. It did. They had a chance to win it. They had a, a decent first touch, but couldn't, couldn't fall through and uh, finish that one to edge a little closer. Here's Chris Hornacek on championship point. His team up and the quick return and kill by Joel Graham. They want a shot back in this. They're gonna need at least an ace or, or some magic on the serving side, win a point or two back, not have to rely totally on defensive touches. Here's Hornacek delivering, trying to keep it alive, back towards the net. Popped up and Hazelton looking for the kill. Good rally here and great finish as we see Becca finish it off. Big spike from Chris leads to a backtrack from Joel. A nice second set cross net from Becca. Julie's in position though. Comes in, smooth strike over her head. Joel sets Becca up for the backhand. Still championship point for Hornacek and Hazleton. Joel Graham on the serve. They'll play this off the pocket. Kept alive by Graham. Graham back over to Graham. Kept alive again. Looking for the kill was Hazleton. She can't get it. Instead, it's Graham looking for room. And that is going to be a valiant effort by Hornacek. But now it's 14-12. Looks like the Grams have decided to turn it on. Maybe a little pressure helps because their second sets and their third hits are, are making it happen. They could use an ace right now instead. Looks like that's going to be front rim. And that is the way it's going to end. Front rim ending the comeback by Graham and Graham. And it will be Hornacek and Hazleton. Chris and Julie crown the co-ed spike ball summer spike champions. What a ride we've been on here today at Coney Island. Twists and turns worthy of a cyclone. Spike with the crowning of new champions. And what a ball it's been. Another tour spot checked off on the road to Santa Monica. For Sean Boyer, Marshall Hires signing off, saying so long, everyone.